Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Cisco Live. Um, this morning, we want to go through a presentation to talk about how we leverage our partner ecosystem to enable software automation. And you know, as the session title is, how we automate together. So my name is Chuck Stickney. I work in our partner ecosystem for Cisco DevNet. And alongside me here, I have three distinguished colleagues uh, representing various partner organizations. So I'll have each of them introduce themselves and then we'll get into the question uh, period or the discussion period for this. So Marcus. Yep. Thank you. Marcus Lind from uh, Mirdot in Sweden, uh, a small specialized data center partner for Cisco, uh, working very tightly with uh, the DevNet community and trying to leverage uh, automation in, with, with all our customers. Hi, I'm Andra Ellert. I'm um, working with um, Entity Limited, um, and I'm taking uh, care at Entity Limited of the technical development of our of our colleagues. Um, and before I got to do this, I was known as Lady Automation a bit inside the company. So the entire topic of how do we automate together and how do we bring our our colleagues on this journey with us, um, it's very close to my heart. So uh, hi, I'm John King. I'm from SoftServ. Uh, I head up our APAC business, uh, and we are a company that's been working with Cisco in different formats for 15 years and are very excited by the DevNet um, program because it's our first opportunity to wear the Cisco badge as a partner um, and leverage our skills as a software and an outcomes-based company, uh, uh, matching that with the great infrastructure that Cisco has and the great um, brand that Cisco has across the uh, enterprise market. All right, thanks everyone. So what I want to start with and just kind of get an understanding from each of your perspectives of as we move towards software, so networking, Cisco's been doing networking for the last 30 years and I think most of our audience is very familiar with you know, CLI, web-based interface of managing things, but as we move to software program programmability, from each of your perspectives as we look as the, at the partner organizations, what types of customer outcomes or what types of customer engagements are you seeing that software is leading opportunities for you? And Marcus, I know you've recently started Miradots, you know, a few years ago, but you started with a software focus. Can you give us an understanding of how you would create a, a small company to be able to start taking on software and why you saw that as a, as a value and opportunity to move towards? Yeah, so what we saw was that our customer bought these fancy platforms like ACI and Hypeflix and so on, and but they, they didn't have the, the knowledge or the skills to start using the API. So they, they ended up swapping a CLI to a GUI, and that's about it. So we want to take them even further and st start automating with uh, tools like Terraform and yeah, using the open source stuff to tie it all together. And by doing that, they are really getting the use of the platforms that they sh should do. Great, great. Yep. And how receptive have you seen your customers to that knowledge of you know, a little bit of perhaps a discomfort of moving from traditional CLI, traditional GUI to, to doing more programming and automation? Your customers are taking that on? Are they, they baby steps. how do they work with that? <laughs> sure. ba ba yeah. Baby steps. Yeah. And, and you, by using DevNet as a, as a starting point, mm -hmm. we, we can ease them into the journey of, of automation with, with, with some comfort. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Nanja, from your side, you know, NTT, a very established, very well-known partner in the Cisco ecosystem for several years, doing things their traditional way, moving a lot of Cisco product, a lot of Cisco service. As you've looked to evolve and to build in a software practice, what sort of opportunities have you seen and how has that, you know, what, what has your customers been asking you for towards that journey? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, as you, as you mentioned, yeah, we are known to be the traditional right. Cisco partner. Um, and this um, brought us, or we were in very close touch with the classical network teams and with the classic infrastructure teams and data center teams and so on. And um, uh, we have seen their, sometimes their struggles in terms of how do we operate all these networks and so on. And we have tried and we, have, we are solving it with, with some of our tools. Um, but some of the clients, uh, they do have uh, the need to have their own their own tools or to have their own uh, way of um, um, having a better way of doing operations and so on. So that's how we started talking. We shared with them from our experience on how we um, start automating and how we operate some other clients' networks. And we tried to bring this knowledge directly to them. And that's 
it's a bit how it started with the clients. They are asking, hey, how are you doing it? How can we do it faster and so on? Um, then the journey continued with um, Cisco bringing technologies, more technologies on the market, which are coming with the API. And then this was the second type of what clients were asking. They were saying, okay, look, I have this very brand new technology. It offers me this API capabilities. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. So this is where we um, created a, a new team. We created a new practice, the network automation practice. Um, and it is how we started solving um, this, this type of request from the clients. That's great, that's great. John, you're coming at this from a little bit of a different angle. So a non-traditional Cisco partner, you, you're not, uh, you don't push product, you're not in the channel system. How do you see you leveraging your software skill, your, your very software focused skills, business outcomes coming from, how do you see that adding to the partner ecosystem and what, what sort of business opportunities do you see from that that encourage you to want to join this program? So, to deliver an outcome, you have to have a base to build from. So we always talk about outcomes. We always talk about what are you trying to achieve? Not what technologies you have, but what are you trying to do? What do you want to see as a, as a business outcome or as a solution? The, the, the reality for us is you can't deliver that without the infrastructure there, without the, the building blocks. So it gives us an opportunity to, to, to talk about outcomes and deliver outcomes, but also to learn about the building blocks and, and build our skills around the building blocks that really ultimately deliver that outcome. Okay. And it also, for, for us, the DevNet is a, is a community where we get to work with other partners um, who have those skills and enable us to scale. So we don't see this as, a, as an, an opportunity for us to be, it's all us, it's all us. We see this as an opportunity to say, hey, we have some skills, you have some skills, let's move forward together. And again, to take an outcome. So to, to move the conversation away from what bits and pieces we have to what are we trying to achieve. Okay. What type of outcomes, you know, Cisco very much wants to get into the outcome business. We really want to see our customers you know, leveraging not just the technology, but delivering an outcome. What sort of outcomes do you see you're, you're able to, to introduce with this DevNet specialization? So the, 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 the easiest uh, question is how do I make more money from the assets that I have which uh, I have I'm a hotel group I have people staying with me mm -hmm. so how do I monetize or how do I take a bigger share of wallet of that person staying in my hotel and that might be location-based service I'm wa walking past a restaurant I might have multiple restaurants in the hotel um, hey you're hungry it's lunchtime why don't we offer you five percent if you eat with us right now um, and that scales whatever type of business. It's how do I make more money from that consumer that's that's in my environment? Right. And those types of outcome are, are are heavily tied to the network infrastructure that's in place. So the existing Cisco product, the existing Cisco solutions, will provide the basis for that. But then you're you're av you're elevating the question or the the conversation with a different uh, different customer set inside of the organization. The reality with the smoke and mirrors of a solution, without the infrastructure, there's nothing. Yep. So, and this is why we're so hungry and, and so passionate about joining the DevNet community is we get that badge of honor that says, hey, we understand that infrastructure um, uh, and you know the incredible install base, but uh, to change the conversation from I have an access point to I have a solution is where people stop arguing about the price and people start paying money for an outcome. Okay, fantastic, thank you. So Marcus, back to you. As we look at you, know, you building a software practice inside of your organization, what type of business value do you see software adding to it and how does that elevate the conversations you're having with the, with the traditional network sales? We mentioned you know, working with ACI and being able to automate that. Are you seeing that help you have deeper conversations at the business level as, you, as you're automating that infrastructure today? <clears throat> yeah, after a while. Uh, we start by talking to the engineers, mm -hmm. often the network engineers, and then we realize that, okay, even if we automate ACI and they can build the, the networks faster, uh, they are still going to send tickets for between the server team and the network team, and yeah. that's where all the time goes mm -hmm. in waiting. So then, then we the next step is tying the server team with the network team together. Uh, and when then is, that is done, then we start looking at the application level. Mm -hmm. And that's where 
the sea level uh, and the business level really comes in because exactly. down in the in the in the infrastructure part that's that's something still something just that should work correct yeah. yep. But e even as the automation of the infrastructure, she so mentioned tying the teams together. I think that's a value add that you can represent to your customers as far as being able to deliver that and then integrating with ticketing systems and things like that. Are you seeing uh, your, your customers resonate to that, that yes, I'm helping you with cost out. It, that, that is a business driver there as well. Do you, do you see your customers respond to that? Uh, yeah, definitely. And that, that's, that's why we can push open source tools because in reality, uh, e even though Cisco may not want it, there, is, or, uh, there isn't always only Cisco in the data center. <laughs> so, so we have to um, we have to see that there are d different vendors, different systems that all has to be tied together. And by bringing them a platform that be able to do that, that that is a real business driver. Great, thank you. Andre, from your side, as we look at you know, kind of the business value, you know, again, we've sat, you know, NGT, long established. What sort of, how, how are you internally selling the concept of levering programmability to build this practice? Can you, can you walk our audience through the types of processes and things that you've done to show that this does have business value, this does affect the bottom line, and you know, it, it's worthwhile to, to go down this journey to enable software programmability and automation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Identity Limited, we do have this great variety of skills, and we have this power to take a client um, in most of the IT domains that we have out there. And then with this foundation in mind, and with the fact that we have already great platforms which are delivering our managed services in a very automatic way, mm -hmm. so we had this set of skills, we knew that this is, that this is available and that we can provide this, the, the clients with similar solutions and so on. Um, so we started uh, building an automation practice um, so to be able to sell, uh, let's say, automation as a service or to be able to um, uh, consult the clients on how to automate. Mm -hmm. um, and so the journey was that uh, we started with some of the Cisco technologies. Um, afterwards, we um, made a mix in the team of network engineers and software engineers. We also have um, like an incredible uh, team of a very um, a good skilled network engineers mm -hmm. um, and most of them they are willing to change and they are willing to transform and to learn new skills and that's where the entire DevNet, the DevNet certifications, um, our internal platforms and so on, they are coming into, into hand to grow the skills into uh, the direction of automation of software defined anything and so on. Um, then the next step into the building the automation practice journey um, was to establish also with the clients and also for us to have a clear picture what else besides the technical skills is needed out there to build your automation practice. Yeah? So we talk here about uh, the culture. You will hear probably everywhere the buzzwords from NetDevOps to automation and so on. And these are all topics that uh, we are helping the clients discover uh, what actually do they mean and how can, be, how can they be applied, how can they be solved. Um, and then, more or less towards the, the end of the chain of building the automation practice, um, is having the um, higher level of engagement with our clients and to talk with them about the problems that they have and how we can solve it. And this talking about the problems and talking how we solve it, how we, s we can solve it, we do it in a, like, co-innovation way. This means that we take also the client by the hand and we discuss with them and we create n completely new solutions of what could work for them in their, in their environment and in their scenario. So it's a couple of steps is, as I said, like going from having the right skills, uh, transforming the skills of your people so they are ready and they are automation aware and so on, to getting the right level of engagement uh, with the client and also to getting the right level of um, experience explaining them or consulting them on to what really all these topics mean. Okay. So you, you've been going down this journey for approximately four years or so. How did you start that? Did you look at a particular technology to, to focus on? Did you look at where most, did you, was it based on customer demand? Did you look at a particular technology and say, this should be the easiest one for me to move to? For, for a organization that's looking to start this journey, how, where would you recommend they, they begin? Okay. Um, 
So we started in a very passionate way because we were a very nice team of um, network engineers, but which were coming with a software background. Um, so in the moment when uh, the first technologies uh, from Cisco with the API um, uh, feature, they arrived on the market for us was, okay, the perfect playground. So the entire team started playing around. Back then it was APKM, which converted, like later we have uh, another product, which is the DNAC. Um, we also um, were playing around with other technologies like ACI, like uh, the Nexus uh, 7000, and then the Nexus 9000 and so on. So based on this, it, it started a bit like a, we are playing with it. We want to discover all these features and we are building things for it. And we are also um, automating some of our use cases. So like the staging use case, because we did have a, a staging area. So we wanted to automate that one firstly for us. And so we saw a great value into this entire process. Um, and that's what we started bringing to um, some of our closest clients. Okay. And then they liked the idea and then we entered into a process with our with the clients which were interested into defining what do they need, what's their problem, and how can we solve it together. So um, in general, I think that in order to start automation practice, you need to have the passion um, and to attract the, the right people inside the team to start this practice. Like without the passion and without this curiosity of learning a new technology or learning something new and without the um, um, the learnability, I would say, to, to be able to, to um, adopt new uh, techniques and to adopt new ways of doing things, I think it's a bit hard to start the automation practice. But if you have people who are passionate about it and who have the right skill or that you can upskill in that direction but who are willing to learn, I think it's the perfect starting, starting position. Great, thank you. So Marcus, as as you've built your organization, so you kind of started from the ground up focusing on software, but can you, can you explain to, to the audience what sort, of, what sort of skills, what sort of capabilities, what sort of benefits, or what sort of, what sort of people were you looking for to, to start this practice that you know you wanted them to, to have this software focus? Yeah, so from the beginning, we, uh, four years ago when we started, there weren't a lot of people that had experience from right. automation. So what we did was uh, I joined, joined up with my other colleagues that founded Miradot. Mm -hmm. We had the experience from uh, automation in uh, Spotify's data center. Um, and he knew some people <laughs> that has built them and then we can leave them. So, I mean, we, we really recruited on a no-to-no on a -to -no basis okay. uh, because there weren't a lot of people with experience. But then as we grew al along, uh, it was easier to have people that came from an infrastructure perspective, uh, but were interested in, in DevOps and, and figuring out how to, how to use Python and APIs in order to automate. Uh, and talent attracts talent. Th th so that's our foundation of, of attracting talent today, and yep. still is. Um, so yeah. Great, fantastic. Now, with DevNet, we have our certifications that we've recently launched. Do you see that as a mechanism for you to do you look at that as a measuring stick for finding new talent, or do you look to take your existing talent and see those certifications to, to vet that they have those skills, or to find additional talent as you grow and scale? Where, where do you see the certifications playing into that process? Um, yeah, so from when I was at uh, the Partner Summit uh, in November, mm -hmm. um, and Cisco launched a new partner uh, slogan that, own your edge, yes. I, I thought that that has been our strategy from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you telling everybody else this? <laughs> but then you also launched uh, the DevNet specialization. Yes. And then I thought, well, then we can take, because our customers already know that we, we are good at the infrastructure part and architecture and designing the data center. Mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't, haven't had a way to uh, prove to them that we're also good at developing the automation part for them. And with DevNet specialization, we have that badge that says, "Okay, you know what we do, you know what you're doing," and we, we have a. Yeah, it's going to be much easier to bring that out to the customer, and the more customer and the more, the more work we can do in that area, the more pa uh, people we can bring in and leverage that into into bringing the customers uh, alive with automation. Great, thank you, John. From your side, so. You're a software company. You know, so you've been you've been building apps and coding for for decades. 
as you look to move that into the infrastructure space, how do you see the DevNet certifications kind of playing into that to help you get towards the networking side of it so that it, it's not just code for code, it's not writing iPhone apps, it's, it's building things to do infrastructure automation? So certification creates common language and, and enables us to talk to a, a broader audience and to understand how the building blocks work and to understand how to communicate better with those um, communities to help accelerate the delivery of a solution. So uh, the, the common language is a critical piece. The other, the other piece for us is also, uh, for a company like us, finally to be able to wear the Cisco badge as well. Sure. So um, as, as classic partners, uh, great partners have had the ability to wear a, a badge of Cisco for a long time. For a software company, for a solutions-based company, we haven't had that ability, so DevNet gives us that. So common language, and the value of brand associated with, uh, with a large install base and, and very happy customers. Great, thank you. Andre, I know we, we've spoke about the certifications and we, we've spoken a lot about how it, face, how it works outwardly, but can you explain to the audience as far as what you're looking at for certifications as you build your team for kind of an inward focus and, and where you see your, your engineers looking there? Yeah, so I think that the, so what the colleagues here are mentioning about the, ex, the value of having the certification with towards the external, this is also very important. Um, but for us also in internal, it's um, very important to now have a certification for, for DevNet. So I'm giving you an example. Imagine two network engineers, they start, they do both of them like classic CCNA. Then they one of them goes and starts learning and does CCNP. The other one gets the interest and goes and does everything what you find on DevNet, becomes really one of the, you know, a, a DevNet uh, uh, ambassador and so on. Um, for the one who goes via the classic way and gets the CCMP certification, th this is a very nice way of recognizing that person. But for the other a very similar profile, I would say, um, who decides to go and uh, learn new technologies and learn uh, some programmability and so on, uh, without the certification, there are very little ways of how you can recognize that person, mm -hmm. which is um, officially recognized uh, um, outside the company and so on. Because of course we can have internal recognition programs, etc. cetera, um, but to have an of, um, outside uh, recognized uh, certification, this is something that uh, for our internal, uh, internal colleagues, um, it is something very, very useful to be able to recognize the talents who are taking this step of going outside of their comfort zone and learning something, learning something new. Great, thank you. And both to Andra and Marcus, as you, you look at your internal staff as far as you know, having the traditional networking certifications, do you see adding those as requirements for your staff to, let's, let's say I have a CCIE that's responsible for data center or security, do you see adding the, the software side to that? So, uh, how to automate ACI, how to automate uh, security, how to automate IOT. Do you, do you see adding those? Do you see adding those features uh, to your, to your staff as, as part of uh, your your grading and your assessments? Um, yeah, very much so because um, I mean th th there are very structured ways in how to design and architecture a data center in terms of infrastructure. So we aren't really worried about that part. Uh, um, and I mean, you have validated the science that says exactly how to set it up and how to, how to do it, but there's no such thing when it comes to automation and, and, and uh, DevOps, because there are a hundred ways to do the same thing. So that, by, I think that the new certifications are even more important than the old infrastructure certifications, because now we can put a tag on that, okay, does this, this person has the knowledge that is required to design the solution where that is very customized to each each customer. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. So, kind of staying on the certification realm, we, we, we you know, when, you, when you started, very few people that were out there, you know, not not a lot of talent that's there. Um, kind of across the panel, do you see the, the idea of certification being a me mechanism to increase the talent pool that's out there to add the to add to the number of folks that can talk software, that can implement software, and can move forward towards doing automation, uh, and then begin to to create the business outcomes? Do you see this as a mechanism to help you find and recruit talent and staff? I think that's definitely 
there's definitely a point to find us, identify on the market the, the, the talents in this space. Um, because right now, so I was um, having an automation team in the, in the German business. Um, and there's a hiring manager for automation team. Good luck with just going and having uh, the profile posted and trying to, to hire someone with, with a classical profile. So um, for someone who is trying to hire NetDevOps, uh, who is trying to hire people who are doing network automation and so on, um, you need to put much more effort in working with the colleagues in, in recruiting in order to be able to identify this, these profiles. Um, as a matter of fact, at the very beginning, the pre-screening part of the, of the CVs um, was very little because I preferred back then, because the profile was so new, I preferred to get better a uh, big bunch of CVs and to be able to sort a bit on my own to, f to see who has the potential to become the next NetDevOps. Because you don't find NetDevOps like free radicals on the street, right? So you need to um, more to assess the potential of a, the potential a person has in becoming a NetDevOps. But with this, with the DevNet certification, um, uh, you do have already a, a small standard which says, okay, look, I need someone with a DevNet certification. Um, and this gives already an idea also to the colleagues in the entire recruiting space, what are we looking for? But this also guides a bit the candidates, um, hey, look, uh, there are companies which start asking for this certification for hiring. Um, so the interest is, is growing and it's also attracting people maybe from the software world to come to work um, uh, in a more network environment. And great lead on to that. So John, as far as taking software and moving towards the network environment, do you see this as a mechanism to help you do that in your existing talent pool? Do you see this as expanding beyond, you know, from, from different geographies and such? So, once you have a, 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 an incredible person, you've got to keep them. Yep. You've got to keep adding value. And this is part of it. So, we don't, we're not looking at it as an attraction, we're looking at adding value within our base. So, you know, uh, Building skills on the depth that we have already brings more value to the customer base as well. So the more skills we add to our people, the more value we add to our customer, the better the world becomes. And the more, the more margin you make uh, off that, you know, the, the more revenue per head you make off those people. So we see this as a great way of adding on top of the value that we already offer. And also retaining the people that we have. That's fantastic. I, I think you know, most of the audience loves the idea of staff retention and also you know, the valuing of staff. You know, everyone likes to, to feel, Yeah. everyone wants to feel loved. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've kind of talked a little bit about the specialization program or kind of announced it. And you know, that is a program that we, we announced in November that we're going to start recognizing partners for uh, DevNet skills and capabilities not just at the individual career certification level, but looking at organizations that have that capability to say, yes, we, we, we've been validated, we understand software, we know how to do automation. From a non-traditional partner space, John, how do you see that as far as you know, bringing that in, bringing you into the partner ecosystem? Can you talk a little bit about how you see the partner to partner type of engagement working for that? So maybe an existing partner that's out here hasn't really started with software yet, those they need to get there, how could they, re how could they reference someone like you to be able to move towards that? So we, we, we discussed a, a, a like ecosystem um, uh, with Google. So uh, there are incredible partners who have incredible data center skills and relationships and local relationships that don't have the software skills that we have. Uh, a majority of our business is working with other partners both locally um, because of local relationships or at scale to help them accelerate their position of knowledge around how do I take a value position from this infrastructure relationship I have to an outcome based. So th th there's more than enough money in an outcome based relationship for partners to work together. And, and, and it's something I want to be very strong about that once you move the conversation to an outcome based um, conversation the margins, the discussion changes completely. You're not arguing about the price point of an access device. You're talking about how I change the revenue projections for the next year. And that means that the ecosystem becomes a, a, a much more collaborative environment. We're not fighting over a price of an access point. 
we're working together to deliver an outcome and there's more than enough to share. Fantastic. Marcus, fr from your perspective as you know, kind of a, a smaller company going into this, how do you see the specialization badge helping you accelerate your business, expand into new markets? Um, can, you, can you kind of help the audience understand where you see the value uh, of this program towards your business? Yeah, as a smaller company, you have always the challenge that you have to be trustworthy and, and so on. Uh, and th that's where the specialization comes in. We can, we can show our customers that we, we have achieved this, we have put some real effort in, in achieving it, and we have the right staff to help you on, on, on this journey. Right. Uh, Do you see your customers looking at you today and saying, we're, we're not really sure about the software side of, side of this, we want to see some industry behind it, um, kind of putting that credence there? Everybody is quite sure that they want to do it, okay. but no one knows exactly how. Uh, so um, so ma ma many for, for many of our customers, we have to act like um, a leading council or, of some sort. Uh, and with the specialization, we, we can do that with, with more trustworthiness and m more, um, yeah, more, in a more strong way. Mm -hmm. And as, we, as we've talked about the program and moving towards that, how long, you, companies starting out with this, how do you envision the process working towards that? So we, we, we go through the, the process of scaling up the, the staff for the, for the certifications and going through that, and then doing the business valuations of, or, or the business uh, observation and validation of, of your internal processes and things like that. How do you see that fitting into your, your normal operation? Do you see that being a, 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 a six month cycle, a two year cycle, how, how, how do you see you moving into that, that space as far as you allocating time and, and investing towards achieving that badge? I think we're looking more on a six month cycle than a two year cycle, definitely, uh, because we are, we are already used to working in the, this manner. That has, has been our edge from, from the beginning, right? Uh, so so uh, hopefully, um, I'm not seeing that we're going to change our business in a large way because we are we are already delivering this to our customers. But we're gonna we're gonna do it in a more structured way, I think, because sure. we we get some tools uh, uh, and some set of tools to do it in a more more standardized way, so we can we can utilize uh, the same workflow over and over again. Right. Fantastic. Thank you. Andre, from your side, is kind of you know the, the the big ship of NTT and kind of navigating through that. As, as we move to the specialization, you're already a trusted partner in the Cisco ecosystem. But to move to the software, can you explain the value that you see from a large existing organization of, of wanting to have that badge to demonstrate to your customers today? So the the value comes from um, different perspectives. Yeah. So you have on one side values um, um, or a, a good, let's say, a good grip on uh, the talent pool outside there. So you, if you have this badge and then you also start attracting people which are searching for innovation and Entity Limited does, has this entire, um, does have this entire power of having the innovation um, uh, possibility to go forward and to involve all these all this people. Another value which comes with um, having a, like a specialization is also ensuring our clients that look, we are or we, we used to be also your traditional partner, but we are able to take you on the entire journey. So not on a just infrastructure or just data center or just the software development. Yeah. We can, by having um, definite specialization and by having our people also certified in definite, we can bring also this um, a conversation further further with the clients. And then having the DevNet specialization is also ensuring us internally that our colleagues um, are feeling appreciated and that they are feeling motivated to continue working in an in innovative space, let's say it. Great, great, thank you. So kind of one last question on here, as, as, as we announced yesterday uh, for our certification, Susie announced that we're doing the, the 500 club or the first 500 uh, certified individuals. We're going to build a program around that. For you all as, as people resources and, and moving towards DevNet uh, certifications and specialization, what sort of incentives or what sort of programs are you looking to do to, to influence your staff to try to, to, to get to that 500 club level? 
I'll start with you, Marcus. <laughs> the most honest answer is that we don't have to. They are motivated by just receiving the badge and moving in the right direction. So we, we, we don't have to make any incentives uh, like that, but as we are quite a small company and all heading in the right, the right direction and the same direction, uh, th th they are already on the journey. So you're going to watch them compete to who's going to be first. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. How about you, Andre? Uh, I can only agree with Marcus because we have so many people who are already so passionate about uh, DevNet and about uh, programmability and about look how cool I can build this thing, um, that for the challenge, so for the DevNet 500, I don't think there is the need for an incentive. I think it's more um, how do we actually um, support our colleagues to get in time everything necessary, like vouchers and so on, to be able to be the first ones to take the certification. So I think that the challenge is not on uh, pushing the people towards uh, becoming one of the DevNet 500. I think it's more how do we actually help them uh, or like how can we be as fast as uh, them going and having the certifications. Like yesterday when uh, Susie announced the DevNet 500 challenge, like the entire people which are working in the different automation teams in like also in the European countries but also in, in Australia and so on, uh, they were all like, okay, like how can I get this voucher? Uh, let's book on the 24th exactly, so we are sure we are the first ones to get the XM and so on. So I think um, for this round, there is no need for for push, you know. Fantastic, John. From your side, uh, I agree and with. And this uh, might have been the first time you've heard about that. Yeah, so. it, it is. But uh, I mean, a, again, agreeing with um, Marcus and Andra, um, the motivation is, I get to do cool projects. Sure. You know. I, at the end of the day, giving someone a, a, a small financial reward for doing a certification doesn't retain them, doesn't make them happy. By saying you do this certification, look at what you get to do, it, it means you get to open to these projects, it gives you satisfaction, it gives you um, enjoyment of your work. That's what people are racing for. And opening their eyes up to what the certification enables them to do and the, 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 the opportunities it does, people will run for it. That's fantastic. All right, so, Thank you, panel, very much. It's been a really engaging discussion. I hope the audience has really enjoyed it. Um, as we see from all the sessions, please go ahead and fill out the survey for this. Uh, it helps inform and it helps encourage more presentations uh, later. Uh, but thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of Cisco Live. Thank you. Thank you.